So let's, um, let's talk about just really quickly a, a basic review. When you're on a job site and, and you have wood product, moisture metering alone isn't the total answer, and, I, and I'll get into why in just a minute. But you have, you have product on the job site, and because wood is a hygroscopic material, you want, to, uh, you want to make sure that it acclimates because when it leaves the, the flooring operation, wherever it's manufactured, they manufacture it hopefully in stable conditions somewhere in the, probably in the range of 6% to 9%, maybe on the upper end uh, 10%. But it's going to go through different environments. It's going to see this, including the environment where it's going to get installed. And... So the concept of equilibrium moisture content comes into play, or what we call known by EMC. And that's a very important concept because you can take a piece of wood and it may be 12% moisture content when you get it. And if I have and I put it in my office back in uh, Rogue River, I know that because of the relative humidity and temperature combination, it's a calculation, I know that the EMC equilibrium moisture content in my office is about 8%. Does that surprise you, Uli? No, okay. So it, uh, it's about 8%. So I know if I leave that piece of wood flooring or what have you in that environment long enough, it's going to equilibrate, that word equilibrate, to about 8% moisture content. Okay, so then when you're on a job site, you get flooring, you want to make sure for most products, now I understand there's some that you maybe don't want to do this, you don't have to, but you should unbundle it, make sure it's laid out. If you have the opportunity, let it acclimate. But it's uh, kind of like wood in a, in a kiln. You want to make sure you have airflow, and you want to make sure that every piece, if you can, gets to see this, whatever the EMC is in the uh, area where you're going to install the wood flooring. And you're your final step then is we're going to measure the moisture content, provide that information to the owner or the general contractor or whoever needs to know that, and try and make sure that, that they've seen it, they understand the concept of keeping the EMC in their, uh, in their home or in a commercial building or, or whatever it is at a correct level by moderating the temperature, making sure it doesn't get too high or low, and making sure the relative humidity doesn't get too high or low. Because just with, with furniture or guitars or anything wood, again, it's hygroscopic, it's going to want to take on moisture and give off moisture so it can shrink or swell. And if you've installed floors, you know that you have a customer and they will complain about gapping or swelling. Well, it's because it may have been great when it went in, but the relative humidity may have gotten too low and they get gaps in the flooring, or they've let the relative humidity get too high in some parts of the country, and it's going to swell a little bit. So that's, that's part of the deal. So it's a, it's a shifting process, but again, critical to this is getting moisture measurements at some point in the process. So first of all, you want to make sure that uh, your meter is has a good battery, and I, I didn't have, and I had to go get a battery uh, this morning, but make sure that it's in working condition, it's not damaged. And in the case of Wagner meters, um, and, and really all meters, but Wagner uses a, a calibration uh, reference block. So if you have a Wagner meter or if you ever buy one, you ought to make sure that you get a, a, a calibration reference just to make sure that the meter itself, before you ever set the meter for a species setting or begin to use it, uh, in, in any fashion that it's actually uh, at the factory settings that it's supposed to be. So I'll just turn this meter on. This happens to be our model MMC220, probably the most popular uh, meter we sell for wood flooring applications. And uh, it's not for concrete and all kinds of things. It's, it's strictly a wood meter, used a lot in woodworking as well, so not just wood flooring. But I'm going to put the meter on this cow block, and you see that the, there's a sensor plate on the back side that's a little longer than it is wide, and, I'm, and so is the cow block. I'm going to orient the meter on the cow block. You would put this cow block typically on a, 
on a, another surface and put it on there. I'm not going to do that right now because I want to show you how that's done. You basically orient it that way, put it on there, make sure it's at the, uh, the baseline setting for the meter, and then you look on the back side and there is information as to what that uh, meter should be reading when it's at that setting. And if it's within tolerance, then you say, now it's good to go. That's true with any instrumentation that you use in the field or on a job site. You want to make sure that before you start, it's stable, calibrated, and ready to go. So let's assume that it is. So the first thing I want to do is establish, well, what kind of flooring uh, am I putting down? Because with the, the uh, with all, all moisture meters, but uh, certainly with uh, Wagner's meters, we try to be very specific about species settings. So you want to make sure that you have the right species settings. And we have a manual. In fact, we have a couple manuals that come with every one of our digital meters. And we have the instruction manual, and then we have a species setting manual, which shows the, the different densities, or what we call specific gravity settings, for different species of wood, or flooring in this case. So I know I have a piece of white oak flooring back here. And I happen to know that, uh, this, I just happen to know from memory that the setting is about 0.6 or 0.60 specific gravity on the uh, specific gravity scale. So I'm going to set my meter. So first I'm going to turn it on. And by the way, again, almost any meter on the market used for these applications, whether they're pin meters from my fine colleagues here or non-pin meters, they have settings for different species or different species groups. So just keep that in mind uh, no matter what kind of meter you're using. So I'm going to hit the species button and I'm now going to set it at 0.60. So I'm doing that now. It's ramping up. You probably can't see that, but okay, now it's set. Now I'm ready. Okay, what have I done? I've checked the calibration of the meter. It's fine. I, have, uh, I know what species I have. I've set the meter for that species. Now I'm ready to use it. One of the big advantages of a non-pin meter is it's, it's pretty fast. With a pin meter, you know, you have to stick it in the wood. takes a little time. Stick it in the wood, move it, stick it in the wood. And depending on the orientation of the meter, that may be a little more difficult or, or a little easier. But certainly with non-pin meters, and then I'm going to get into some other uh, misnomers that have been uh, out in the market for a while, and I'll, I'll correct those. You basically are just placing the meter on the wood, and you can take a lot of readings very quickly with a non-pin meter. Essentially, I'm just scanning the board, and as I do, I'm seeing the meter readings. So as fast as I can do this, I can scan the board and get moisture measurement along the length of a piece of flooring. You can do a lot of flooring that way. You don't have to be limited to a few samples and if you get tired of doing it or a few samples in a bundle. You can if you want, but you can scan the board very quickly. You could scan half of your flooring if you wanted. You probably don't want to, but you could. It's very fast and very easy. Now, something else. These have often been referred to as surface meters. I understand that. Uh, I don't think I've fallen into the habit of calling them that, but they're, they're anything but surface, okay? When I put, and I wish you could see this, may, maybe you can, right there? Yep, okay. It's reading, what are we reading here? About 7.7, .7, okay? Now I'm going to show you something. I'm going to put my hand behind the meter. See what happens? Okay. We're not reading the surface. You can see that. We're penetrating through the material, giving a full thickness reading into that. So if you're reading flooring before you put it down, it, it's a great application. You're reading through that material, getting a very good average moisture content, not just the surface, of what that, what that board happens to be. So nearly all uh, meters that are non-pin, have this ability to penetrate fairly well. Now Wagner has something, a technology that we have trademarked called IntelliSense. We have the ability as well 
to, let's say you have a little bit of surface moisture on, on a piece of, of lumber or a piece of uh, flooring. I'm going to demonstrate that now. I'm going to get that reading again. And by the way, I want to point out that species button. Now I'm paying attention to the camera a little more. There's the species button right there. It varies with the meter, but that's, that's it. Now we're reading again. We are at about 7.6. All right. Now I'm going to cause a little grief by spraying moisture on the piece. I'm going to wipe it off just so it doesn't get liquid on the meter. The meter reading is going to go up a little bit, but I'm going to comment on that just a minute. It's going to go up. We're now reading 9.3, so it did go up. The surface moisture is affecting it a little bit, but with some non-pin technologies, when you do that, it spikes the meter. It will go way up. Wagner technology was designed to pretty much ignore this surface moisture phenomenon. Not completely, but it does better than any non-pin meter that I'm experienced with. And then if you let this sit, and we will, we'll just let it sit a minute, and it doesn't take long, and I can put the meter back on that piece of wood after the moisture is dissipated, and that effect is com almost completely gone. The moisture is, some of it's evaporated, of course. Some of it is soaked into the wood. Well, now it's part of the moisture in the wood. So it's legitimate. But we try to minimize that surface moisture effect. So let's just take that reading again. Right here. We were at 7.8. We're just about back where we were, right? That's what we call IntelliSense. We've trademarked that, and that is a, that is a characteristic of Wagner non-pin moisture measurement technology. Okay? So, we've talked about IntelliSense. We've talked about the fact that these meters read through the material. So before you start putting this flooring down, you get a very good idea of the full thickness moisture content of the flooring that you're going to put down.